Joining us this morning, Tatiana Jordan. Tatiana Jordan. I get the name right. Jordan. Tatiana. Tatiana. Okay. It's Tatiana Jordan. Kevin, you are a proven technology leader, an innovator, and a thought leader. You're a published author. You have been in the tech world for, for a bit. You know your stuff. And now you're at Data Finch. Mm -hmm. and, just, and just tell us, what, what is that like? What does it mean? What is the mission? You know, it's, uh, it's an interesting company. It was started uh, about seven years ago by a couple of folks. One was a therapist, and the other was a, a, you know, a developer. And, the therapist worked in the uh, behavioral analysis world helping treat kids with autism. And they wanted to develop a, a way to um, collect data and kind of see trends in behaviors and things like that. So, so important. And they launched the product after a couple of years. And in, in the last five years, it's grown by leaps and bounds. And they've got a, you know, a, a really, you know, good company right now. It's growing. We're doing a lot of innovative things, bringing out new products. But I think the thing that really attracted me to it was that it was sort of in that transition phase. And it is, you know, a really cool technology. But most of all, it just has great impact on these kids. So we help therapists do a better job, you know, of, of, of treatment so they can treat more people, treat people more effectively. And it just, it, it's, it's a great mission. It's huge. It is a cause that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's datafinch.com. Yes. And as you're watching right now, if you want to go and kind of Google, but also listen and watch, we won't be mad about that. So datafinch.com. Um, talk about that, that value that you are giving to providers and, and how that's helping families. So in the, in the prior world of pen and paper, mm -hmm. you know, a therapist would sit down with a, with a student, as they call them, and they would you know, mark certain things like uh, a behavior they were trying to practice to master a behavior like recognizing a color or, uh, you know, not kicking or, you know, any number of behaviors that they're working with a student on. And doing that with pencil and paper while you're trying to work with a child is, is difficult. And then, but even when, you, when the session's over and you want to transcribe that data, you know, it, it's time consuming to transcribe it. And then you can, but after you transcribe it, you can see trends and things, and you might be able to notice very small improvements in certain areas that you wouldn't notice unless you, you graph them out. What our application does is allows them to view these things, you know, as soon as they're done. And, uh, you know, track behavior over a much longer period of time, and uh, it's just, it, it's a view into progress, really, for a child, and helps them realize which skills they're working towards mastery on and which ones they still need to work on. Well, I mean, I'm a huge believer in the fact that data dashboards help make the world a better place. So if I am a behavioral therapist and I sign up for Data Finch mm -hmm. um, and I'm treating children, what does that look like for me? Well, it's, uh, you, know, you can sign up for a free trial right on the site. Uh, the application runs on a, a large number of devices, so like iOS, Android, even Kindles. Cross-platform. Uh, Cross-platform. And plus. then there's a portal application where you can go in and sort of administer things and you know, set up your targets uh, that you're trying to, you know, or behaviors you're trying to master and things like that. Um, so you know, get a free 30-day trial. You can try it out. Uh, it's very configurable, so it's not, it's, it's not sort of a one-size, you know, for everybody type of thing. It's really, you can configure the product to do pretty much whatever you want it to do in terms of targeting behavior. It's very complex on the back end. Um, so it really fits people's individual practice and therapy approach uh, very uniquely mm -hmm. and allows them to, we fit their process and instead of having them alter their process to fit our software. Wow. So That's, that's huge. Um, as somebody who is not a behavioral therapist and really trying to understand the value that you're bringing beyond the, the high level. Can you get uh, more tactical with for me and, and tell me about some specific use cases and, and maybe even perhaps about the customization that, that a behavioral therapist might want? Sure. Well, so first, I'm not a behavioral therapist, right? <laughs> yeah. We are not behavioral <laughs> therapists. Do not take what we say as diagnosis. Yeah, I'm, I'm a technology guy, so, yeah. but I, I think um, just sort of to simplify, you might be working with uh, a student that um, needs mastery in being able to recognize a color or a, to tell the difference between a car and a truck or to not hit themselves or e even um, 
recognizing when they have to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. right? So things like that that are, uh, mm -hmm. some of them are much more you know, important than others, but still they all need to be, to be mastered. And so you can set up those specific skill sets into a curriculum and then work with the student on that curriculum until they master those things. And then you can go on and do other things as well. So it's, you can set up a, a program where you're working on a, a core set of skills and as the student masters those, just kind of move on to other ones and continue to work with them. So it's, um, like I said, it's very configurable. It fits the therapist's needs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, see if, if I can make anything else. Um, well, so yeah, when you're talking about it fits the therapist's needs, I guess my question is, what are what are therapist's needs? You know, uh, what that's something that I was thinking kind of back in my like, well, what do they need? Well, besides collecting the data, uh -huh. they want to kind of view trends in the data. They uh -huh. want to be able to see if a student is progressing in a certain skill set or you know if they're reaching mastery they also want to know like after a student masters something there's a period of time where they want to go back and make sure that they still understand that sort of or not regress right yeah. so they kind of reinforce that learning so the software also says hey you should go back and check this particular skill that's been mastered and just make sure that the student's still there wow so it, it's it's a way to not only uh, help the therapist collect the data but help the therapist uh, remember to go back and check certain things to you know keep on the program with the child and, and all that type of stuff. Well, it's great. I mean, I'm a huge proponent of whatever is in your head, uh, getting it out, uh, yeah. you know, onto paper or a, a digital platform because it frees you to be able to to be able to think critically. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not focused on all the little nuances and you can see it, then you can take it to the next level, and that's what Data Finch is doing um, in a very impactful way. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's really nice to know that the work that we're doing, like when we make something more efficient or we add a new feature, that that is having a result in changing somebody's life. And it's that's, so important. It is really, it's a, it, it feels good. It's a great mission and it's very attractive to a lot of people. Absolutely. I mean, using technology for good, yep. I don't, can't think of anything better, you know? Yeah. Um, can you talk about the market size, both uh, the prevalence of autism and it's growing? It is growing. And, and the, the amount of healthcare providers that need something like this. So the, the market's pretty, pretty huge, right? And, and unfortunately, autism is growing. And part of that is due to the fact that the definition of the autism spectrum is changing. And that, that has itself grown mm -hmm. over years. But a few years ago, um, I'm sure it was well over a decade ago, there was a law passed in one state that insurance providers had to um, uh, cover this type of treatment and that's that was huge and most other states have followed suit now there's still a few that haven't but because of that the need for treatment and you know has grown and the availability for treatment has, has also grown that also brings into into play some other things like um, you know when uh, when a, a therapist wants their services to be covered by an insurance company they need to provide certain data so we also help them do that right huge yeah. So we're also developing a practice management tool that ties into our data collection tool, which is called, the data collection tool is called Catalyst, and the, um, the practice management tool is called Vantage. And we are developing those in an integrated way so that, uh, you know, when you file a claim, it pulls the data in from the sessions with the child, and you can, you know, send the data over to the insurance company to make sure you get paid. But um, one of the things that I was, I was talking to our CEO, um, a few weeks ago and he, he mentioned a statistic and I can't remember the exact number so I won't quote it but it was something along the lines of there was there's a pretty large percentage of these kids that when they are uh, in behavioral analysis therapy for a period of time that that you know a, a large percentage of, the, of them were able to go on and lead very productive normal lives yes. without supervision so yes intervention yeah. and the earlier the better yep. can actually make such big strides in improving uh, their quality of life and their ability to, to interact. Um, yeah, it can. It can. It's, um, you know, I apologize for not knowing the exact figures, but oh it's, gosh, it's, it's absolutely, I mean, the size of the market, I mean, there are, we have a few competitors out there, but the market's big enough and you know, there's just, um, there's such a need for this. We just recently hired a person that had come from that world and had been a, a BCBA a BCBA, which is a, a behavioral analysis a, a, a therapist, and um, they had always done this with pencil and paper. And you know, she, she said she literally went home after her first couple of days in the office and was in tears. You know, talking to her husband about how I can't believe I used pencil and paper for all those years. 
So, now, of course, she's a big fan, right? And in her experience, and we have several BCBAs on our staff that have done this firsthand, so they know, you know, what it's like to, you know, lead a therapy session, to, you know, have a student in treatment, and the types of things that they really need. And, and uh, you know, we have them in key roles in the company, so they're really impacting product direction and things like that. That's huge. And, yeah, yeah I mean, it, your role is not to pitch the company to investors, right? No. So the market size <laughs> question isn't super fair. It was more to point out to everybody watching that um, this is a huge issue in society. Yeah. If you do not have a child with autism, um, understandably, you're not, you're not in that world. But if you do, it is your whole world. I will never forget my, my first day at, at Data Finch. Um, I came from the commerce world. And I spent many, many years, two decades there actually. And um, so this was kind of different for me. And my first day they gave me a set of videos to watch of somebody actually, you know, uh, working with a student in therapy and kind of following um, this young boy's life through a few sessions. And it was, uh, as a parent, I was just like, oh my God, I couldn't even imagine. You know, and I, and I didn't have to experience that. So seeing these videos and the types of behavioral challenges that uh, this young boy presented to his parents and to his therapist, I mean, it was kind of heartbreaking. Um, but then seeing the change was just so gratifying that, you know, working with this type of therapy that um, this young boy was able to kind of get out of some of these behaviors and, and you know, it was, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It was just really um, humbling experience to, to know that, uh, on, that we were able to help, yes. you know, kids like that. And then on the other hand, it's, it's just like an eye opener because if you don't live with that day to day, you just really don't know um, what that experience is like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a, I'm sure it's a pretty big challenge. It is. Yeah. And, uh, my, my heart goes out to any, any parent or healthcare provider that is immersed in that every day because it's it's a challenge and I'm so thankful for everybody who spends their time and, and mission on improving the quality of life for children affected with autism and that are on the, the spectrum and uh, that also goes for Data Finch. You know, thank you so much for what you're doing. You know, tech for good, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah, I mean, I think we all feel that way there and, uh, you know, especially, you know, our, our co-founders have really set up a, a unique environment. Um, they also own a therapy practice that does this type of work. Which is great to get learnings. It is, and, it is great. Yeah. And um, they've just created an environment that's so uh, conducive to, uh, well, the culture is just great. I mean, people can try things and they can say, hey, can we try this you know, feature? Can we add this? You know, and I think they've given us the... Uh, the type of environment where it's okay to try things and you know and have some failures and learn from them and because of that I think we're a much more innovative you know culture than than some you know I've seen in the past. Culture is key. It is. Um, you you're no stranger to you know our mission and vision here at 3CI of, of servant leadership and and understanding everyone's core strengths and abilities mm -hmm. and kind of on that note you know I want to know what can we do for you? How can I help you? For everybody watching out there, knowing that you are the VP of development for Data Finch, now knowing what Data Finch does, what can we do for you? How can we rally and help you and support you in your mission? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I think just in general, uh, you know, when, when working with 3CI in the past, and we just hired a, a developer uh, through 3CI, and he's, awesome. he's working out Thank great. You. He's an awesome guy. And, uh, but the thing that was most important to me, um, it really was the cultural fit and the individual's ability to problem solve. I know in a lot of companies, um, people are looking for very specific skill sets. And I think that's a very short-lived impact when you hire somebody because technology changes so fast that I would rather have somebody that's got a strong ability to problem solve and that can kind of think, um, think in ways that we're not. So I want them to bring uh, non-behavioral um, uh, analysis type of thinking to the table and say, hey, have you thought about doing this? You know, we did this in this other company. You know, can we try this here? Does it have any application? That's great stuff. I, you know, what I, and I think you guys did a great job for us there in finding this uh, developer 
who come from a completely different industry, great attitude, you know, great problem solver. You know, he'd worked on our technology stack a little bit, but everybody, the way they implement it is a little bit unique. Um, but, uh, you know, he's able to dive right in and, uh, you know, kind of start making a contribution. But I think, um, to your original question, uh, what you could do to help us is just continue to understand our culture and what we need and, and really our mission. Because, you know, our, our mission sort of, uh, it is high impact. And I think understanding that and, and helping us attract the type of people that want to work in that type of culture and you know, have that type of a mission is huge. What would be a win for, for you professionally with regards to Data Finch? Obviously, there's the high-level mission and vision. You're making an impact. You're truly helping people who, who need it and helping the people who help people who need it. But let's let's talk more business. Like, what are some some partnerships? Maybe you'd be mm -hmm. looking to close. Anybody out there watching that just might be the right person? Like, mm -hmm. how can we how can we help Data Finch in that regard too? You know, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for integration mm -hmm. with our platform. And one of the key things we're working on right now is is sort of redesigning our platform a little bit to be more scalable, a little bit more flexible. You know, as technology companies grow and applications grow, you kind of go through this market penetration. Um, you've been there, you know. Oh, I'm, you know. I'm in the middle of it, Kevin. <laughs> so, right in the middle of it. <laughs> but it's, it's a different strategy than when you actually penetrate your market, uh -huh. right? So you go from having to do all these little things to attract you know, this customer and that customer to, you know, now you've got tens of thousands of people using this application and you have to be a little bit more selective with what you add. Yes. And so we're starting, we get requests for people to say, hey, I want to integrate my product with your product fairly frequently. And what we're trying to do now is put a framework in place for how do you integrate with data function? What does that mean? So, you know, integrating with things like, um, you know, assessments or sort of, sort of to, you know, skills assessment for a student that might want to, um, it's like an independent assessment that kind of says, here's the, here's the things that we recommend you work on. And there's a lot of these things out there, but you know, how do we integrate those yeah. in, a, in a very open sort of way to be able to, um, you know, enable a company that likes that type of assessment to be able to use it directly within our application. Um, things on the, on the practice management side might be some complex scheduling tools. You know, how can we match um, a therapist with the student based on an assessment? And how can we, um, you know, can we do things like uh, if a student's progressing in a certain manner through a curriculum, can we make uh, suggestions about how uh, you might alter that curriculum to be more effective yeah. and things like that. So there's a lot of opportunities like that. Uh, and I don't think a lot of these things fall into sort of the traditional behavioral analysis space. There's a lot of things on the business side, like uh, how can we optimize cash flow for a practice you know, when you're working with a number of different payers. Right. So I And that's think where Catalyst comes into play. That's Vantage. That's, that's where Vantage, Vantage comes Vantage. into play. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, on the business side, there's a lot of things that have nothing to do with behavioral analysis. It's just, you know, it's running a practice. And uh, one of the people on our advisory board runs a practice in California that has 500 therapists in it. So it's very large. Wow. And, you know, for, for her to be able to increase her cash flow by, you know, 5%, uh, you know, the rate of payment on some of these claims is just enormous, right? That, that puts her in a completely different place. So we're starting to work through some of those issues, like how do we optimize this? Really the practice management solution, we're trying to look at it more of, you know, really business optimization. So uh, we, we know you're doing the therapy work on the catalyst side, but how can we help you run a more efficient business as well? Yeah, because, you know, when you go to medical school, <laughs> You're not also trying to go to business school right. <laughs> and and tech school. It's right. like so. Thank you so much for making therapist lives easier. It's it's needed, right? Like let them focus on what their passion is. Yeah. Um, and and thank you for building the tools to make that happen. Um, so beyond going to datafinch.com to learn more and support Kevin and the team and what they're doing. Um, you're active on LinkedIn. You write some pieces. I am. I haven't written much then. lately because I've been really focused on data fence. Which is good. But, uh, yeah, you, it is good. you know, stay heads <laughs> down. But if anybody would like to connect with you and learn mm -hmm. more, um, where do you suggest they go? LinkedIn's probably the best. Okay. Um, I'm also on Twitter, but I haven't been on. I haven't been very active there lately either. Um, I wrote a blog on commerce for years and years called Carlson on Commerce. Nice. Um, and I'm. I'm 
in the process of sort of archiving that. The site's going to stay live. It's still there. But if, I wrote about all kinds of different things, security, privacy, e-commerce, mobile, wow. all types of stuff. So um, it's still there. If somebody wants to go read that, I can connect with people there as well. So Great. Awesome. Well, we'll put those links in the YouTube description below. Cool. Um, and we're just we're so thankful for, for your time, for you being here. Sure. Uh, for what you're doing in this space. My pleasure. Yeah. And um, as we close, is there anything else that you want to put out there? If you're interested in Data Finch, you know, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. We'd love to hear from you if you're interested in, uh, in Data Finch and we'd love to tell you more about us. Awesome. Kevin Carlson, thank you so much for being here. Sure, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.